He had me hanging up suspended in the basement. And he came up next to me and he said, go ahead and scream, I'll cut your vocal cords, I've done it before. Imagine having your head locked in a soundproof box, plunging you into complete darkness and barely able to breathe. This is what happened to Colleen Stan in the 1970s, and she lived like this for an excruciating seven years. She endured unbelievable physical and psychological torture at the hands of her captors. So join us while we dive into the sadistic details surrounding this horrifying case. In 1977, 20-year-old Colleen Stan was hitchhiking from her home in Oregon to visit a friend in California. Unfortunately, she made a decision that would change her life forever. In the 1970s, hitchhiking wasn't considered as dangerous as it is today, and some even considered it a fun way to explore new places across the United States. Colleen considered herself an experienced hitchhiker and was evaluating all the potential rides before she entered any of their vehicles. She had made it to the town of Red Bluff, California and was looking for her next ride. She had passed up multiple vehicles because she didn't have a good feeling about the drivers. And soon, a seemingly harmless couple, Cameron and Janice Hooker, pulled over in their blue Dodge Colt and offered her a ride. The couple was clean cut, friendly, and even had their baby in the car. This made Colleen feel safe and even lucky that she'd be finishing her journey with a nice young family. The trip started out fine and the couple was talking and making conversation, but as the drive went on, Colleen kept noticing Cameron giving her weird looks in the rear view mirror. She thought this was odd, but just chose to ignore it for the time being. After about an hour, they stopped at a gas station to fuel up and get some snacks, at which point Colleen went in to use the restroom. She couldn't seem to shake the eerie feeling about Cameron and how he had been looking at her in the rear view mirror. She even contemplated not returning to the car at all, and instead running as fast as she could in the opposite direction. But she calmed herself down with the relief of knowing he had his family in the car and surely wouldn't attempt anything malicious with them there. And so they all got into the car together and went along their way. Shortly after being on the road, Cameron had mentioned there was some landmarks he wanted to explore while in the area. Colleen didn't have any objections, and so they exited the highway down a dirt road. As they continued driving, Colleen realized they were getting further and further into the middle of nowhere with no landmarks in sight. Just then, the car stopped Janice gave her an odd look and exited the vehicle with her baby. Before Colleen could exit the car, Cameron pulled out a knife and held it at her throat. He threatened her and made her agree that she would do anything that he asked. He then handcuffed and blindfolded her, and she began to hear him rustling with something in the back seat. Cameron had created a makeshift wooden plywood box with metal braces and locking hinges. The inside of the box was completely lined with soundproof foam and barely large enough to fit over a human's head. He placed the contraption over Colleen's head, locking her into complete darkness and muffling any of her screams. Cameron and Janice then covered her in a sleeping bag and drove back to their house in Red Bluff, California. Once they were inside, Cameron removed the box on her head and ordered her downstairs into the cellar room. 
At this point, Colleen was relieved to have the box off her head, but was terrified for what would happen next. He blindfolded her and strung her up with leather straps. He then began to whip her uncontrollably. She screamed as loud as she could, but Cameron assured her that no one would hear her down in the dark cellar. He then left the room, only to return with Janice, and they then began to have sex on the floor right in front of her. She was horrified and disgusted, and began to wonder if she was just living in some horrible nightmare. But little did she know, her nightmare had just begun. After they finished, Cameron locked her in a secondary box that immobilized her hands and feet. He then locked the first box back onto her head, putting her back into complete darkness and now unable to move. This torture continued for weeks and Colleen began to lose weight and become ill. Cameron realized this and decided he needed a better method for restraining her. And so he built a coffin shaped box that would have ventilation, fans and blankets inside. He would keep her chained up and locked in the box for 23 hours a day, only letting her out when he wanted her for his own sick pleasures. This torture would only get worse as Cameron's dark fantasies escalated. He would hold her head under water until she could barely breathe before letting her head up again. And he would also use tools to shock her or burn her skin. He then decided he would put her to work and so he began to lock her in a small closet under the stairwell. While in this room, she was allowed to remove her blindfold and work, shelling nuts or other small tasks for Cameron. The time in the closet was the highlight of Colleen's day, being that she was outside her box and not being tortured. During this time, Cameron would also make her sign a sex slave contract, ensuring that she would do anything and everything he ordered her to do. In his sick, twisted mind, he somehow thought this made her willing and everything he was doing was okay. In order to keep her from trying to escape, he made up an elaborate lie about belonging to a group of sadists called The Company. He would tell Colleen that The Company was always watching and knew where all her family members lived. And that if she ever tried to escape, they would not only do horrible things to her, but also her family. Not knowing what was true and what wasn't anymore, Colleen believed everything he said and this kept her from trying to run away. Just as he began to trust her more and more and give her more freedom, the family would move to a mobile home farther out into the country. This unfortunately meant there was less room for everyone, and so Colleen was forced back into the coffin-sized box, which was kept under the hooker's waterbed for 23 hours a day. The torture would continue, and during this time, the hookers would give birth to their second child. And after this, Cameron would again start to give Colleen more and more freedom. She was able to do yard work, go on jogs, and even watch the kids under Cameron's supervision. Even some of the neighbors that saw Colleen just assumed that she was a live-in nanny for the hookers. By March of 1981, Colleen had been in captivity for almost three years. By this time, Cameron had grown confident in his control over her and surprisingly decided he would let her visit her parents. Though, he would be present the entire time and would assume his role as her boyfriend. Her parents were completely elated to see her and were happy that she was alive and well. Her family would even take a picture of Cameron and Colleen embracing each other during the visit, painting them as a perfect happy couple. Due to the way she was dressed and how she was acting, they assumed that she had run off and joined a cult. And this is why she had gone missing for all these years. Since they didn't want to lose her again, they didn't ask many questions or put any pressure on Colleen during the visit. 
Within 24 hours, Cameron would end the visit and they would return back home where she would be locked back in the box. This agonizing way of life went on for another three years until Janice Hooker finally began to get jealous of the amount of time and attention Cameron was giving Colleen. In 1984, she reluctantly decided to let Colleen know that there was no dangerous organization called The Company and that Cameron had made it all up to keep her from escaping. Janice and Colleen then planned her escape that night. And the next morning, as Cameron went to work, Colleen phoned her father, who wired her money for a bus. She then called Cameron to tell him she was leaving. He cried and begged her not to leave, but Colleen was finally free after an unbelievable seven years in captivity. Upon arriving home, Colleen began to adjust to her new way of life and never did turn Cameron in in fear that he might hurt Janice or the children. Janice, on the other hand, had begun to realize how much of a monster her husband really was and didn't want this to happen to another woman. It was then that she decided to turn him in to police. And with that, Cameron Hooker was eventually arrested and put on trial for a breadth of charges. At trial, Cameron and his defense would try and argue that Colleen had stayed all those years on her own free will, though the police had found evidence of his sex slave contract and multiple horrifying pictures of him torturing Colleen. This and the testimony by his wife, Janice Hooker, would help seal his fate. Janice Hooker would be granted immunity for her testimony, and Cameron Hooker was sentenced up to a total of 104 years for sexual assault and kidnapping. Cameron is still in prison today and won't be up for his next parole until the year 2030. Colleen Stan suffered multiple permanent physical and mental injuries from her time in captivity. She has since tried to move on and now has a daughter of her own. She's also very active in organizations for abused women. Her story is a reminder to never be too trusting and more importantly, to never give up. Well, that's gonna do it for our episode today. We hope you enjoyed watching and if you did, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button for more content like it. This is Josh. Thank you for watching Bizarre Legends.